Hello everyone and welcome back at Coding Boss. Today we will continue on beginning the C++ tutorial video series and we will take a look into graphs. First, let's see what the graph is. We have nodes in a graph and vertexes. Nodes are these black circles that they are connected with vertexes which are these blue lines. It's meaning that we can go through these blue lines so we can go and reach other vertexes like that. So for example, from vertex number one, we can to go to directly from to number two or number four. A simple graph is a graph where every vertex is between two different vertexes. They are not directed, so they are an undirected simple graph, but they can be directed. So if you have an arrow pointing, then this is a directed graph. And there are also self loops that can go from a node to itself, but in a single graph there are no self loops and there are also no multiple vertices between two lines like this. So we have a simple graph here and we want to create a code that can handle graphs well and solve tests with it. So we go ahead and open up codebox. So the way we will do it is we will have vector of integers and this will also be an array where the maximum size, let's say it will be 200,000. The way we can make more easily by 200,000, by the way, is that we have this letter E. This is 100,000, 10 to the power of 5. This is a million, this is 10 to the power of 9. And this is 2 times 10 to the power of 5. And plus 1 if we want an extra number 2 store 200,000 right? So, this will be an array of vectors of integers. So we already took a look at two dimensional arrays and two dimensional vectors. This may be a mix. One of the dimensions is an array and the other is a vector. I prefer to use this in case of graphs because the number of nodes is fixed, like capital N here, and then Inside of each node, we store its neighbors, those that are connected with vertex with it, so we can reach it directly, and that will contain in a vector because that size is unknown in the beginning. So we want to dynamically increase it. So meaning that EX contains all nodes that can be directly reached from node x. So it's that simple and we can go ahead and fill up these vectors. For that we have from the input the number of nodes and the number of vertexes. Then we will go through the for loop for the number of vertexes and then we will have node a and node b. We will take it from the input And then we will push it to node A, it's vector, meaning that from node A we can directly reach node B. And what we need to do is also push it to node B to node A, because we can also reach from node B to node A. Now if we have a directed graph, it's really simple, all you need to do is remove this line. So if we reach we can go from node A to node B, but we can't go from node B to node A. That's it. And we have an undirected graph of this case, so I will leave it like this. And we already typed the graph. We have this vector, we have the number of nodes, number of vertices, and we have everything about it. Now let's solve a simple problem about the graph. Let's say that we have a task where we need to find all the nodes that is reachable from node 1. Obviously going through the vertexes of the graph. And the output will be in the following format. First output the number of such nodes 
then output is not. So what we need to do for this is that we go through our we start from one and go through each node that we can reach. For this task, I will include two more nodes in same more nodes in our graph. Let's say that we have node number eight here, which is not connected with anything. And then we will have node number nine here, in node number ten here, and they will be connected with each other, but not with node number one. So in this case, our program solution will be all the nodes from 1 to 7 and 8, 9, 10 can be reached from node number 1. So what we want to do in this function is go ahead and reach all of the nodes that we can reach from node number 1 in a smart way. So we will have a boolean array for this and it will contain all the nodes and if it's false, we haven't reached it yet, and if it's true, that means that we have reached it. And we will also have a void function, def first search. And instead of it, we will have one single parameter, the current node that we are currently in. So we will set the use to true, because if we are here, that means that we used it. And Inside the main function, we will call this function, function starting from node number 1 because we want to know which nodes are reachable from node number 1. Then we will have a vector of integers as an answer and we will go through the nodes from 1 to 1. And if we use this node, meaning that we reached it, then we will push back to the answer. Then we will output the size of our answer, meaning that's the number of nodes that we can reach. And then we, in a for loop, we go through the answers. If you remember from last video, that's the way we can easily do it, or with another for cycle for integer i equals 0 until n plus plus i, we refer to it as answer i. Here we can refer to it as s, and we output s. And we will output an end of line after it. So how do we do this the first search function? So task of the function is to reach all reachable nodes from node C. So this will be a recursive function again from our previous video. And we will take a look on how it works. So, what we want to do with this service is we start from node number and we will go through all of those, all of their neighbors that are connected with the vertex, and we will do the same process to those nodes as well, avoiding nodes that we already visited. Meaning that if we are here at node number one, then we will go to node number 2 and also node number 4 but first we will repeat this process to node number 2 from node number 2 we won't go back to node number 1 because we already visited it so we go node number 3 then repeat the process here which goes to node number 5 and number 6 oh sorry it goes to node number 5 first which will go to node number 6 and then from node number 6 we can't reach anything, so if we go back to node number 5, and then we go node number 7. We can't reach anything from here, so we go back to node number 5, we can't reach anything more, we go back, we can't reach anything more, we go back, we can't reach anything more, we go back, and we will go to node number 4. So, so the way it works, is that we will call the DFS function for node number 1. Then, inside of this call, we are still inside of the function where we call the DFS for node number 1, we call node number 2. Then inside of this, we will call node number 3, 
the inside of this we call node number five then inside of this node number five so you can see that we go inside another function is quite a lot we go to node number six and here we will actually turn to node number five's execution because we didn't find anything so we go to node number seven and now we will return to the execution to node number five because we couldn't find anything so we are right here now then we will return to node number 3 because we didn't find anything then we will return to node number 2 because we didn't find anything then node number 1 and in node number 1 we found node number 4 but we can find anything from there so we finish with the function so the way we, we write this here is very simple we will go through for a cycle of all the elements of E and C. Remember, this E contains all of the nodes that can directly be reached from this node. So we go through all the nodes that directly can be reached from here. So from node number 1 it's 2 and 4, from node number 2 it's 1 and 3, and we can see it for the rest. And if we haven't used it, if not used, the S, then we will go ahead and Call the DFS function for S. And wait, that's the problem itself, very simple. If we go ahead with a knight and we input this graph, we will have 10 nodes and 8 vertexes. The vertexes are between 1 and 2, 1 and 4. You can input them any other you want 2 and 3, 3 and 5, 3 and 6. 5 and 6, 5 and 7, and 9 and 10. So you can see that there are 7 nodes that we can reach, node number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and node number 1, we can't reach node number 8, 9, or 10. Now one more thing about this is that we may have multiple test cases inside of a test case. It's really common in programming competitions. So let's say that we have test cases. And first, we will receive the number of test cases. So the way you can do this is by TE minus minus. Here it's important that the minus minus is after TE because it returns uh, the value of TE, then it decreases it. So this repeats it the test number of times. And then we can either copy this code here or another solution is to create a function that solves the problem itself once and then we repeat it that many times that we need to so we will have the solve function here and we will copy and paste it and then we can solve it so we take the input go ahead and do it and it's really important that after we are done we should make sure that all of the data are reset to its original values otherwise we will have a bunch of data coming through the next solution which is which will result in a wrong answer so we will go and delete every data that we used which is set the used value back to false and then clear all the vectors. The way you do this is dot clear. So there are two ways you can do it. You can either do it after you are done with your solution or before you begin. If you do it before you begin, you need to input the nodes first. Then you can clear everything in that range. And then you can solve the problem. If you do it this way, remember that there will be there is a possibility that, for example, in the first test case, n was 10, and in the second test case, it was 5. You don't actually delete the values from 6 to 10, you just won't use it. And every time before you want to use it, you will delete it. Or, every time after you used it, you delete it. It's up to you which one you prefer, I will do it this way. So, this way, we clear all the data, make sure that everything is actually cleared. Now we can input the number of test cases. 
uh, we have first input a small graph, let's say that we have three nodes and three vertexes between node one and two, between node one and three, and two and three, obviously we can match everything. And now we can go on and input our second data, which will be this graph again. Between so ten vertex ten nodes and eight vertexes between one and two, two and three, three and five, three and six, five and six, five and seven, one and four, nine and ten. We go and that would be this graph. One of our videos, we will also learn how to read from the file and I put data for, from the, uh, to the file so you don't have to copy the values over and over again. But in this video, we will focus on graphs. So, this is the first search when we need to, when we go this order, the order we find these matrices, these nodes. So, let's say that our test changes now. And we need to find all the distances from node 1 and we output n numbers, number of nodes, the if the height of the numbers will be the distance. From 1 to i. If it's unreachable, output negative 1. So, in this case, we will need to use another method of going through the graph, which is a similar method called BFS first search. First of all, we need to store the distance inside of an array. And remember to here where we put every value back to its original value, remember to place it back to zero. Right, so now we have changed the code. And instead of DFS, we will do DFS. And instead of outputting this answer, we will go through from pan and n and output the distance i. So our default value will be negative one. Now we can see an important detail that because we reset the values only after the first solve function, we will have this di values as zero in the beginning. So negative one means that we haven't reached it yet. So in order to solve this, we will need to initialize these values before we call the press first function because of the first iteration. And of course, we need to set the distance of the value 1 and 0 because 1 from 1 is a 0 value. Now after this it's optional to keep this here or not because we will delete it. We will have the default value before we use it any time. So you don't have to use it but you can just leave it there. It's up to you. It doesn't affect the code. So how do we do this BFS function which will tell us to these things? So, First, we will set the used value to true. Then we will also use a Q. Because instead of going this way, we will actually go in order of distance to node number. If you remember in the last DFS, the first search function, we didn't go by the order of distance, we just went in an order we find it. So we went here, here, then here, then here. So this time we go from in the order that the distance of 1. So we will start with the distance 0, then 1, then 2, then we go up and so on. 
So in the queue, we will input the distances, the nodes in order of distance. So what we will go to is go through this function that we go through all of the nodes that we can reach. And if we haven't used it, then we will push it to the queue and set the distance to the distance of z plus 1 because we just found it, so it's distance plus 1 Now in some cases you might want to store who found this node first we usually call it parent so we will do parent s should be equal z because that's the parent so z found s, so that's the parent now we don't need the parent, so I will just leave it commented if you are the class where you need the parent make sure to initialize an int parent like this and don't forget to go ahead and delete the values here like this parent i should be equal to zero so if you have a test that you want to uh, save the parent you can do it like this so now what we will do is we add it to the queue and also store that we used that value so you can see that we have don't actually call the bfs function for s we just store that we found it and the distance and what will we do if q is not empty then we will have take the next value from the front of the q we will take out the next value and we will finally call the password search function for the next value it's important that you don't, don't just call it like this even before you pop it and then pop it because if you do this what will happen is that before you pop the pop from the queue we call the bfs for this value and the queue will still remain with that front value so when you are done with that function you will have the same front value so we call it again and then you will call it again and again and again and it will be infinite so instead of that you need to make sure that you pop it before you use the next value and because you popped it you can't refer to it as q.front anymore so you need to type the next value here so that's why you need this variable so now if we go ahead and run it take this input as well and you can see we haven't run the sd yet I guess we call it this is here and I just refer to it as d so we will change that and here I also call it distance, so make sure that you refer to it as the same name. So now we will have our test case, then we copy in that graph that we have, and we will have the distances. Now I will show you how this works. So I will use arrows this time, and we will write the distance from. So the distance from number one is zero obviously then we go through all of the neighbors first and set the distance to one and put them in the queue so node number two and four will be in the queue and now we go to node number two and go through all of the neighbors and set the distance so it will be in the queue node number three it will be in the queue with the distance of two and of course we took out from the queue to node number two and then after that we will continue with the queue with the node number four we just take it out and we didn't fight any more neighbors because remember we don't, don't go where we already was so we will go from node number three and we will put node number five and six in the queue with the distance of three and three then we go node number five we take it out we already 
visited node number six, even though we've followed actually there, but we put it in the queue and set the visited to true. So we will have the distance of four here. As you can see, node number seven has four here, and we have put in the queue, and finally we will take this out from the queue. We don't find anything, we will take this out from the queue, we don't find anything. So these will be the distances. And this is the correct result. So that's how you determine the distances. And in some cases, you want to use that first search algorithm, and in some cases, the best first search. It depends on the problem. You need to think about it. You need to understand the difference between them, and then you can use this. So, what if the graph is weighted? So, all nodes have some weight. Let's say that between this three and six, we have a weight of four. We have a weight of 3 between 1 and 4, we have a weight of 2 here, weight of 1 here. Let's say that between 3 and 5 we have a weight of 1, and this is a weight of 2, this should be 2, and this is 2 as well. So this is a weighted graph, every vertex has a weight. It usually refers to distance or cost or something, and you want to minimize it. So instead of the so that first search function will be the same when you don't care about the distances, you can just go through them. But what if you want to know the distances? Now you need to use something else, not the breadth first search function, but you need to use the DEXS algorithm. It's really similar, but you need to use, instead of a queue, you need to use priority queue. And you will have pairs of integers inside of it. A pair, something that contains two data. And you can define these types of data. You can have boolean or you can have string, anything. So we will have two integers. And the first one, you refer to it like this dot first, and you refer to the second like dot second. So the first one, is the distance, is the total distance, and the second is the node. Now we also want to make sure that we take out the lowest distance, not the highest one, so we will need to type this vector, and remember, we type it the same variable here, if you are not familiar with right, you struck at our last video. And then you will have the greater function. And you have pass of so in this case we will return the lowest value first and the highest one. And for our vector here, we will also store Pass of integers instead of a regular integer, meaning that we will go through them like this. This is the first will be is the weight, and the second is the node itself. The reason you want to put the first as weight is because the pair sorts the values if you sort it normally according to the first. Value. And if we want to start based on the weight, then we should have the weight first and the most second. So, what do we need to change? In the DFS, we just go through the same way, but instead of sim simply referring to it like S, we need S dot second because now we have a weight. Now the BFS function, I will go ahead and take this out because we need to do something else instead in a weighted graph, this Dijkstra algorithm. We have Dijkstra, I will just go with dj short and we will have a starting node. So instead of our make function, we will also have another variable called weight that we take from the input and then we will push back to the values. Remember, wait first, then the other node, and this is the way you make a pair. You need this Kirby brackets, then you put a comma between them. 
So second here we put the break and the mode. So in this case we set up everything in this pair of integers and just is the weight and at the node will be contained in this arrays of vector. Right? So we have the same task with, with the weight graph. We want to output the distance. So we will set used C as true here as usual. Then we have the distances neutralized here and instead of the BFS we call the Dicera algorithm. Yeah, but the distance is so now we just need to write the algorithm that works the same way as the BFS but with weighted graphs. So we go up here, take a look on this. The way we do it is very similar. So we go through the neighbors. Now, because we have a pair here, that's why I like to use auto because we don't need to swap int to pair int it now. We know that now it's a pair int. It. So if the second, which is the node, is not used, then we will apply to the priority queue, push back the distance. Which is the distance of this current vertex that we need to go through and the distance of the original node. And we will put node here as well. Here we will change it to parity queue and this is the front we will have top. Now it's not BFS, we have the dice drop algorithm again. Now, instead of assigning the distance here, we'll assign it here. And instead of int, we we'll have a parent int. It's an auto, and we take the second value, which is the node, and the distance of the next second, which is the node, will be equal to the first. So we save the distance here and we save note as a second variable. There's one more thing we need to do. In this case, we might put the values of the same node multiple times. And the reason for this is we might find something better. So the stress algorithm works in a way that it always, because it's a priority queue, goes to the node with the shortest path. And by the way, this only works if all of the vertexes have positive or zero, so they can be negative in this case. Because if we find the sh absolutely shortest one yet, then it has to be the minimum. And why is that? Because we have a set of nodes that we already reached. Let's say that we already reached these three nodes. Now we know the distance for this, and let's assume that they are correct. Of course, in the beginning, the distance of one is zero. That's correct. Now, the shortest to one to them will be obviously the shortest to everywhere because if we have anything else, any other way that goes, let's say that here the shortest is five because it's two plus one plus one, four away from one. Oh no, the shortest one is from for number four because it's three away from number one. And let's say that it somehow is not the correct distance. If it's not the correct distance, then we need another path which, which is shorter. But for that to be true, we need to step outside of these nodes and step on an other node. But then the distance will be shorter than this because there are no negative vertices. So that's impossible. So if we have the shortest distance, it will be the shortest distance at all. However, let's say that we find this node number 6 from node number 3. And the distance will be 4 plus 2 plus 1, 7. As you can see, there is another way to go there. With 2, 1, 1, 1, which is 2, 3, 4, 5 instead of 7. So we found the 6 first here. But when we go to node number 5, because it's 
shorter and we always go to the shortest path. Five, sorry, four is shorter than seven. So we go here first. So we sort based on the total distance. Then we will find node number six again. And because we will find it with the lower value, we will, actually we will always put it in the priority queue, but we, we get the lowest value first. So in the priority queue, we might have values with the same node multiple times. So what we need to do before we go here is why priority queue is not empty. We will check if the front or the top is not something that we already used. So if priority queue dot top and dot second, because we are talking about the node, is used, then we will drop it out because we already visited that. So priority queue dot pop. And now we have a while function because if we pop it out, then we need to check again if the top element is something that we used or not. Otherwise, if it's not, then we will break out of the while function and now we can go ahead and check it. So that's the way priority queue works and the dice algorithm. So now we will so see the distance. We go and edit these values. So we will have the vertex is here. You put this here so I can type it better. So the weight of the vertex is really 2 here, between 2 and 3, 1, between 3 and 5, 1, between 3 and 6, 4. By the way, you don't need to do it in your own. In most pro competitive programming uh, competitions, you will have example input that you can just copy and paste. Between 5 and 6, it will be 1, 5 and 7, it will be 2. Or you can just come up with your own example if you want. So I just got copied. Now we go back, read and edit the code. Oh, and I've set up Q. the regular key instead of the priority queue. So to change it back. So we don't know it. And remember that we have, now we have more test cases. So we will just use one test case here as well. Now we will input our graph. Now we got the results. So as you can see, node number one is one zero distance away from itself. Node number two is two distance away. And then node number three is three distance away. And we actually go in and write these results. And so this is, and I will explain the way it works. So first of all, node number one will be zero distance away. We know that. Now the first thing that the algorithm will do is go with the priority queue and put the distance two with the node two instead of the priority queue. This will be our priority queue and we will keep track of it. And now we will also put the node four with the distance three. So first we have the distance then we will have the node four. So it will put this pair here, and then it will go ahead and take out the front of the priority queue. So it takes out this and goes to the neighbors of this. So it won't put the node number one here because we already visited it. And we will set the distance as two here. And now we will go here and say that node number three is three distance away. And actually, because the second number is lower, this will be before this value. But in case the distance is equal, it doesn't matter which one we use it first. We will visit it based on the second value. So we will have this here and we will put in front of the other value. And now we will visit this. So we will set the value distance to 3 here. As you can see, node number 3 has the distance of 3. And now take this out. And set the distance and put the queue into the queue. This distance is 4, and the distance is 4, and the node is 5. So 3 plus 4, the distance is 7, 
in the northeast. Six, we put this in the priority queue. So now we will take out the front, the node four, which we have the distance of three. Now we don't actually put anything else because this doesn't see anything. So you continue with our priority queue. We had node number five with the value four in it. So we will say that the distance is four. You can see that node number four was three, node number five is four. And now we will put the new distances in it. Go ahead and delete this order. So now we have seven and six. Now play the cube. So, so we will put the distance two, three, four, five and the node 6 in the priority queue so this will come before this other node 6 because the distance is smaller so the distance will be 5 this time and we will have the node 6 here distance 5, node is 6 and now we will put this into the priority queue as well the distance is the 2 plus 4 which is 6 so we will put this between these two so distance is 6 node is 7 now we take out the front which will be this so the distance here will be 5 if you use it we don't find anything else so we just move on we will take out this from the priority queue the distance will be 6 now when we reach this, it's the node 6 with the base 7, but because we already reached this, we will take this out from the queue and we are done executing. And the distance in these cases will be negative 1 because we never reached them. So that's how the priority queue works. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.